your, your high five game, I think is amazing. People, people enjoy <laughs> the, 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 the high five. I, I, was, I, was, I was told, somebody asked me on Twitter, can, can Schoolboy Q high five you? So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start that from, from the beginning. I, I, I think that was the, the, the most incredible thing. The, what, what I like about like TDE the most is just, you know, the, the brotherhood that they share. And I, I liked it, you know, when Kendrick's album came out, that you participated in it, even if you weren't on it, the, the, with the artwork. And I, I thought that was fresh and, and, and just how it was a real thing. And, and, you know, he is doing his cipher and just, although it was only a high five, to me it was so ill because it just showed y'all friendship. Um, what, what, what was the background? Like, was that his idea, your idea? How'd y'all end up doing I'm just that? happy, man. I'm just happy. You said high five, you looked at me. What had done that plan? I mean, you looked at me. I mean, he said high five, he took a step, he jumped off, okay, I'm going to be ready. Yeah. Give him a high five. That's good. That's the, that's the 30 for 30 background story. <laughs> oh, into the high five. High five, five yeah. <laughs> there you go, right there. That, if I ever play football, I'll know that if you want to route, that you're going to catch it. Because yeah, you're going yeah, to be, you know, be ready. So, the instinct. Whatever. Yeah. So, uh, Q, man, what, what's happening with you? I, I know you're, you're loading up to, to drop your album, uh, uh, Punch. Uh, if you guys know Punch from, from Top Dog Entertainment, the president, he, he, uh, he gave an old interview the other day with Al uh, comparing the difference between your album and, and um, Kendrick's album, saying one is like uh, uh, life after, I think he said, I'm gonna get this quote all wrong because I don't have my notes in front of me, but he, he compared one of his to being like Biggie and the other one to being like Tupac. Um, how, how would you say, you know, what, is that an accurate indicator as you're, you're, you're putting together your, your major label debut? Um, I mean, yeah, you can say that. When I, my influence is on this album. When I was working on this album, I was really influenced by Pac and like, like All Eyes On Me album and like old 50 Cent, you know what I mean? Like I was just listening to a lot of Wu-Tang, so like it, it kind of shows with this album. That's um, cute. So what's going on with your album, man? What, what, what's, um... Are you posting it different than your mixtape? Does it feel like it's different? Are you, are you trying to construct something different, or it's like it's, it's the next one? I mean, honestly, I never even like did a mixtape. Like everything I did was like attacked as an album. Like mm -hmm. I've been putting out albums before anybody knew who my name was. You know what I mean? Like that's what that what the Top Dog plan was. You know what I mean? To put it out there and see how many people I actually support it. Right. You know what I mean? That let you know where you stand. That's where we started off at. You know what I mean? Rather it was 500 people by the album or 200 people. It's a step up, you know what I mean? From nothing. Right. So we came in dropping albums and I take everything serious. So like, I don't I don't feel like putting the mixtape out is like really cool for me because like I figure in my mind, like why work on two separate projects when you can put all that effort in one project and take your time and do it like the people that was putting out classic albums back in the day, like Nas, J, Big, Pop. They took their time with their music, you know what I mean? And rather you heard from them once a year or twice a year, that album was going to live until the next album dropped because it was classic, it was timeless music. So I'm more likely like focused on albums and my craft more than letting fans hang on to a couple of songs they can pick from and bump, you know. And he did a very amazing job because I was just in New York and I heard a lot of this album. So it's it's some shit. He he really it, he he got this new shit down, but he captured this this thing that like you know LA it, it does have a thing. But this motherfucker made it new again. Yeah. He made it new with it, and it's a language that I'm from. Okay, you got Kendrick. He's from Compton. Right. That speaks to a different crowd. J Rock and Watch, that speaks to a different crowd. Al Soul from Carson, that speaks to a different crowd. But he's from a place where my side of town, we familiar with it. So he's speaking things that we know about. Right. But it sounds so new. Like I've never heard Figueroa sound so good before <laughs> in my fucking life. He has a million, I mean, I know y'all ain't from LA, but he has, I've seen his shows a million kids saying Fig Side. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. But they love it. Right. And he, he, the groove, everything, he, he's making everything so new. And I think, me, personal opinion, that, that that's where he's going to win. Because he's, like, this old interview that Quincy Jones said, they said, an artist that lives long and a hit record is something that feels so old but so new at the same time. And I think, like, Q's record really captured the old essence of hip-hop in the West Coast, but it's still some worldwide some worldwide shit, so that's kudos to Schoolboy Q. Y'all make sure y'all buy that record. Yeah.